Good morning, it's Saturday the 31st of January 2015. Welcome to this week's hour-long live talk show, United Kingdom Talk. And um, I, you know, I don't remember hearing the clock chime behind me at 12. It's just gone 12 now, a couple of minutes past. So can you, can you just take a note? Um, we're looking for the clock to chime at 12.15. Now, if that doesn't happen, could you let me know? Because I will forget. I am now at the age of Alzheimer's disease. Yes, I will forget. So please keep an eye on that little clock behind me there. And if it doesn't chime at 12.15, I will need to know because something's gone wrong with the clock. It's been up there a couple of years now. I remember buying that from a local jewellers. I just like the tone. Ding dong, ding dong, ding dong. We like, a, we like a chiming clock. It's very, very cold here today, but not as cold as it is where... Voiceover artist is. Good morning, sir. I haven't seen you for a while. We were concerned, you know, that there'd been a funeral, to be honest. Do let us do keep in contact. We do worry where people are. Well, I do anyway. The cat's not so bothered. She's just downstairs with her newly trimmed claws. Oh, it's wonderful, Mr. Voiceover Artist. If you've got a cat, I will highly advise, once the cat starts sticking to you... You know when you've when you've got a, like a cat kind of held over your shoulder or against your breast or something like that. Obviously not, you know, not not milk feeding it, ladies. You, you don't do that. We don't want to do that with cats because the claws start <laughs> digging into your breast. It's not very pleasant at all. But if you notice that, like when you finish stroking the cat and she wants to get down or you want to put her down, and then you try and, and she's attached to your clothes, that's the time to get the claws cut. Or if you notice, as she walks over perhaps a doormat and the doormat comes up with the cat, it's time to get the claws cut. Especially if she doesn't go out much. She or, she, she or he doesn't go out much. And once they're, the claws have been cut, not declawed, that's a very cruel thing, I think, declawing animals. Because they don't just take the nail off, you know. Oh, no. No, they take the ends of the fingers off as well. It's not a very nice thing. We don't want declawing of animals. But, you know, just to keep them trim, because you're doing it for the animal more than anything else, then that's a good idea to do that. Anyway, voiceover artist says, Hell, oh, Christopher, it's a balmy minus 23 degrees centigrade. Where are you again? I can't remember. Can't remember where you are. Minus 23 degrees centigrade. That is cold. That is very, very cold. Not a temperature that I'd like to be out in. He says, not sure if electrons are able to transfer images through the interweb at these temperatures. Well, you can always try. Always welcome to send a photo in. You can send anything in on the email. The email to the show is chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Um, a very good morning to Daniel this week, who lets me know that uh, his wife has a little bit of a trim this week. Oh, that's good. We don't want that hair hanging on the ground, you see. That's the trouble, Daniel. You know, once short hair like that gets gets on the ground and you start tripping over it, oh, it's awful. Or a bit might drop off your head, you know, into your teeth. You get a lot. Oh, we get that in the swimming pool. Oh, it's vile. Oh, you know, when you're swimming along and it's something, something wrapped around my finger. You know, and it, you pull your finger, hand out your swimming pool and it's someone's hair. Oh, I mean, I suppose some people must get it in their mouths. There's all sorts of very nasty things going, in, going on in swimming pools, I think, Daniel. Oh, dear me. You know, I've yet to see anything. How can I put this floating bast? Oh, <laughs> no, there's all sorts of very nasty things in swimming pool. I've been told it's the first six inches. The first six inches of the swimming pool at the top is really dirty. You go underneath that and apparently it's quite clean. Did you know that? I bet you didn't even know that, did you? No, I was told that by Danny, the pool boy. Yes, and Trevor, the manager. That's where all the dirt is in that top six inches. But I don't swim underwater. No, one of the um, teachers there, <coughs> youngish girl, you'd like her, Daniel. Very pretty, long, flowing, blonde hair. Maybe not as long as your wife's hair, as her hair is, is, appears to be touching the floor now as she walks along, does it? 
Is that what's going on in there? Can't you get a razor and do it yourself? You know, just go very, very carefully, you know, round the lips, if she's got hair there as well. And, um, you know, <laughs> do it yourself. I thought about getting one of those zzz, zzz things. I could have a go myself, because I, I have a, a 0.5. Oh, yeah, that's another thing. When you go into hairdressers now, right, and you say, I'll have half, please. Eh, get, get, because they're all foreign. They're all foreign from other countries. I'll have, can I have half it? Ke, ke, ke. And someone would say, oh, it's 0.5. Didn't even know that, you thicko. Didn't even know that, thickos. Half is 0.5. You want to come to this country, you learn our measurements. 0.5 is half. Don't give me 0.5 and 0.75 and all that old crap. I've spent years, years looking on my keyboard for a half or a quarter. It's not there, is it? It's all point this and point that. Dear me, how did this ever happen? Let's turn back the clocks, as Nigel Farage will tell you. That's what we need to do. Turn back the clocks and start living in the 50s again. Obviously with computers, though. Although there were no uh, computers in the 50s. Anyway, back to the swimming pool thing. Yes, uh, that's where it's really dirty, so you're supposed to go under. And this, this teacher... This teacher, while she's teaching little children... I love it, watching them... Uh, teach the children to swim what an achievement that must be don't you think to take a child who's never swum before and then six weeks later they're swimming because of something you've done i think that's that's wild and fantastic isn't it and now and again you know every few weeks she said she she look over and i say hello put your head in the water i'm not putting my head in the water i might drown Especially with you teaching the kids in there. They're probably weeing in the pool. Oh, bleh, oh dear. And they have aqua. They have aqua at the Hilton Hotel where elderly um, ladies generally, they jump in the pool and they do all these exercises. Oh, I bet they're leaking in there, dear. Leaking! No, I don't leak in the pool. Not yet anyway. Maybe another few years. <laughs> it must be filthy at the top of that pool, isn't it? And you get all that makeup scum. Because they got this jacuzzi, which is kind of attached to the pool, and the bu the the water from the jacuzzi bubbles over into the pool, and that's uh, apparently a, the, a lot of those bubbles are people's makeup and soap, and it all comes off in the water. Oh, you must it must be just like sitting there in a great big bubbling vat of bacteria, mustn't it? Oh no, I did once. Because I sold a property, was it the year before last? Christ, that's gone quick. Yeah, it was the year before last. That's gone very quick. Um, because the, the lease had, had got down to 70 years. And you want to get rid of something when it gets to that. Or extend the lease. But that's a lot of lot of uh, kerfuffle, that is. So you just sell, sell it. And uh, I had a little bit of money left over. And I thought, you know, I, I considered having what was called an endless pool to the side of the house because we've got a little bit of land on the side of the house not massive amount i'm not talking about acres maybe one to th i suppose from the side of the house i suppose about 12 13 about 12 foot and again about 16 foot the other way well you can buy an endless swimming pool which is is like a very very small swimming pool but it's got this motor or pump type thing inside it and um, and you switch it on, and it creates a what do you call it now? A current going against you, and you swim in this very small pool against the current. And I inquired, although we were ever so expensive, you were looking at twenty thousand pounds. What you know, because you have to have something built over it as well. And then the ongoing costs of electricity to heat the blooming thing and all this. And it was prohibitively expensive. So I didn't have one done in the end. You know, but I thought, if I have my own pool like that, just imagine how clean it would be. I wouldn't be weeing in my own pool, would I? No. Oh, it's just dreadful, dreadful people. They really are. Uh, so that's the swimming pool. Uh, Daniel says, no, the cat. No, the cat what? Oh, right. So, sorry, you, you had your cat nails trims last week, did you, Daniel? Or you had the cat fur? You don't cat fur. Don't cut cat's fur, do you? Surely not. They, I don't think they'd like that. Dogs do. 
My sister's got um, a King Charles Cavalier. No, it's not. No, it's not. It's a Spaniel. And my mum had a King Charles Cavalier. And they both had their hair. They love it. Dogs love it, didn't they? All that pampering. Oh, they love it. But I don't think a cat would like a fur um, uh, cured. But you see, the thing is with dogs, they're stupid. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to say that. Dogs are a little bit stupid. They are. They are. I saw some videos this week. I was hilarious. If you type in cat videos onto YouTube, you will come up with so many, many different um, uh, amusing videos of cats doing various different things. And this week I saw, uh, I think the title was Thou Shalt Not Pass. And it was dogs and cats in various different situations where the cat was blocking the the path that the dog wanted to take. Various different, maybe the cat was in the middle of a living room or halfway up the stairs, because you know they like to go in odd places, might be sitting halfway up the stairs or in a doorway. And the dog would approach, and they were all different types of dogs. I think there was a Labrador, there was a Bulldog, there was a Rottweiler, um, a, a, a Staffordshire Bull Terrier. And all these dogs approach the cat. As the dog approaches, the cat kind of looks up and then just looks at the dog. And the dog, dog stops dead in its tracks. And then it kind of looks around and doesn't know what to do. Because the cat is still there. And the dog then kind of puts a paw out to, to take another paw down. And the cat moves its head and it pulls its paw back quickly. <laughs> And it is the funniest thing. So when you don't go yet, for Christ's sake, don't please don't let me lose another viewer. There's only six million of you as it is this morning, <laughs> and the dog just doesn't know what to do. And the, the, all the, all the videos are very similar, but different cats and different dogs. And the cat is just sit, sitting there, and the dog w w won't let the dog pass. It's so funny. And there's another one where, where I think it's going up the stairs and a dog is really pushing itself against the wall, trying to get past. And then at the end of the video, there's a couple of them where the dog takes the chance and as it gets near the cat and goes past the cat, it goes, <laughs> like that, attacks the dog. Like, how dare you go past without my permission? We love cats. We absolutely love cats. Um... Let's do some messages. Good morning to Terry H is with us this morning, who says the keyboard needs cleaning. Oh, this, this I've got to tell you, do you want to have a look at my keyboard? It is absolutely filthy. It really is. I don't think, Terry, you can really properly clean a keyboard without removing all the keys. I mean, there must be so much virus, virus and bacteria and all sorts of nasty, sticky substances on this keyboard. There really is, you know, because obviously I sit here, or I used to sit here and eat jam and uh, uh, marmalade on toast, and, and I, I don't know what that is there. It's very, very suspicious. But there's all sorts of stuff on this keyboard, Terry, and um, I think the only way to do it is to buy a new keyboard and be done with it. And that's it. You're quite right. I need a new keyboard, don't I? Oh, we're not... What's... <coughs> <coughs> We're trying not to spend money this year, though. I'm trying to save up some money to pay a little bit off the mortgages. Want to do that this year. Although I have purchased... I may have to disappear for a few moments today, boys and girls. OK? Because I am awaiting a delivery. Yes. I have ordered a new mixer. A new mixer is on its way. In fact, I have been e e emailed this morning... And told it is out for out for delivery, and as always, I've bought it on Amazon. One click ordering, we love that. One, and you can can you can uh, follow it where it is. Now, I, where's that little thing? I did have that here. Uh, did I bring that and save that somewhere? One moment, please. There it is. Here it is. Order update. It says we're going to deliver your package today it says track your package so let's just do that one moment please oh there's an email there from wayne i'll have a look at that oh oh 
Tracking information is currently not available. Oh, how annoying. Oh, hang on. Additional traffic information is here. One moment, please. Carry. Oh, and how annoying is that? So why did they, why put it on there then? We're sorry, tracking information is currently not available. Oh, I hate that. Oh, it does annoy me. Let's try it again. Let's, shall I kick it again and see what happens? One moment, track your package. No, tracking information currently not available. Oh, it's useless then, isn't it? But I did do it last night while I was at work. And it said the item had been delivered to the deliverer or dispatched to the courier well let's hope it's not yodel oh they're bloody useless they are they leave it in place they leave stuff outside i remember once ordering a laptop computer i think it was uh a couple of laptops ago it might have been a while and that was yodel right and i've been swimming i got back and there's a large package not not in a bin or hidden anywhere outside the front door a big cardboard package. And I thought, I wonder what that is. Well, it won't be the laptop. They wouldn't leave it out here. Yes, they did. Yodel. Don't use low yodel for Christ's sake. Absolutely useless. Left outside. I have a very, very nice man who delivers uh, DPD, I think it is, or something like that delivery. His name is Morrow. He's from Africa. Oh, he's enough. Work long hours. And I call him Morrow, my African friend. And I wave to him now as he goes past in his little DPD van or whatever it's called. Sometimes it's not actually Morrow. And then, you know, I'm waving away at the van. Hello, Morrow! Morrow! I wave like that and then a white bloke goes past. Oh, it's not him. I quickly hide my face. Yes. Um, Daniel says your clock didn't chime. Oh, I wonder what's happened to that. Do you mind if I have a quick look? I'm not happy about that. Oh. It's gone wrong. I thought it had gone wrong. One moment, please. What's happening here? <sighs> Ongoing maintenance work here at United Kingdom Talk. Let me see if the switch... I wonder if the switch has somehow moved. Don't say my clock's gone wrong. I'd be very disappointed. I can't quite see in there, so I shall have to use the uh, lamp on my mobile phone. Now, what's that sign there, dear? Oh, well, oh, it's got one and two. What does that mean? So that's... I can't even see it. It's so small, the writing. Why is everything in such small writing now? Oh, it's embossed. Black on black embossed. Oh, that's it. All oh, right. Okay. So, is that what's AM, PM? All right. Let's, start. let's just flick the mute. Oh, listen. Here's the other chime. Do you like this one? Oh. No, it's not very traditional. No, back to the other one, please. Thank you. Yes, that's better. Turn it up a bit. Well, I hope that works now. What's the time? Oh, you know what? It's a little bit slow as well. I wonder if it's the battery. One minute. Have I got that testing thing on the back? Oh, I have. One minute, one minute. How do I do that? Push that. Aha. Dead battery, is it? One minute. Power check. No, there's loads of power in there. Oh, what's happened to this? Use alkaline battery. Well, it is a Duracell battery. And this is a proper Duracell. You always got to be careful buying these um, Duracell batteries. Don't go in a little side shop, you know, with foreigners running it, dear. Don't do that. Go to a large supermarket. Because what happens, some of these little shops, not all of them, obviously, and it's difficult to tell which ones are lying and which ones aren't. They buy this stuff. It might say Duracell on it, but it's come from China and it's a cheap copy. You have to be very careful, dears. Now, I hope 
that's going to work now. So we've taken out the battery, flicked the switches left and right. So if there's anything that needs resetting, that will have reset now. I've got to put it back on the wall, which is always an effort. One moment, please. This is very heavy, you know. Very, very heavy. I only bought this for you to listen to, not myself. Right, let's put this back up. So it's... Oh, now it's... Right, now it's hang on. It's about a minute slow. One minute. Because in front of me on the other side, I've got a, a, a radio clock, which sets itself from uh, from rugby. So we're, it's about two minutes past it, right? Start the pendulum swinging. That's it. Hopefully that'll sort that. I can't stand things not working, dear one minute. I can't find the R well. There it is. Right. Beautiful clock. Hopefully. Hopefully you'll hear that chime now. At uh, at twelve thirty in seven minutes time. Is it straight? There we are, straight. There we are. Ongoing repairs here at United Kingdom Talk. Um, Daniel says I can tell you what's wrong with your clock. Well, what's wrong with it then? What's wrong with it? And it's not. It wasn't cheap either. Actually, there's a, there's a lovely clock in uh, one of the pubs I work in in the Mayflower. In London, oh, it's beautiful, beautiful, beautiful clock, and you wind it up. But I think someone's lost the key. <laughs> How unfortunate! Uh, some messages. Good morning to uh, good morning, Wendy. Uh, Wendy's only just tuned in. Do try and keep up with the rest of us, Wendy dear. You've missed it all, haven't you? If only you were here earlier today. So far, we've given away a a, a, a Nissan Micra, uh, a holiday for two in Barbados. Uh, a small self-contained flat in Coventry and a weekend for two in the Cotswolds. You've missed it all, Wendy. Do try and get... No! No, you can't do it now. It's too late, dear. You can't do it now. I'll tell you what I will show you, Wendy. You know I've been on this weight, what, weight loss thing. Right, I've just weighed myself this morning. You remember I was... Um, 13... What was it? Uh, uh, 13 stone, exactly. Right, hang on a minute. If I can just... I've got to, got, to, got to turn the photo round or you won't see it. One minute. I just took this photo today and I shall expand the photo. Check this out. Yes. Look. Look. 12 stone and four pounds. Thank you very much. Very hard work. 12 stone and four pounds. The weight is falling off. No breads, no cakes, although I do have the occasional roll, maybe one a week. Probably not even one a week. And I do have a little bit of ice cream every day. We have to have treats. We like treats. Um, ah, there we are. Wayne. <laughs> Wayne, who's on the... Um, <laughs> I'll just save that picture, Wayne. One minute. How do I do that <laughs> God's sake, so much to do. Uh, pictures, no, we won't put it there. Put that in desktop. Um, public, newly saved items, that's it. We'll put that in newly saved items. Okay, Wayne has, that's that's um, uh, the person who, whose message we read out at the beginning of the show because he's got so many different names. So many different names. What was his name anyway? Oh, I've lost it now. But anyway, he uh, he sent us a message in at the beginning of the show, and he's just sent us a picture in of him uh, borrowing a dog from his neighbours, Bruce, the house husband, and Sammy, the lorry driver. So one minute, let me just bring that up. There's a picture of him there, and go. There we are. <laughs> <laughs> That's Wayne <coughs> with a neighbour from the dog. With a dog from the neighbour, rather. We are loving the beard, actually. Very rainbow-coloured, Wayne. Very nice indeed. And uh, do you find it's, it's useful to have uh, a beard like that in, in the weather that you're experiencing at the moment, where you are 23, minus 23 degrees centigrade? Oh, 
Far too cold for me. Um, got a message here from someone called Dina. I've never heard of Dina. And it says, yay, someone to talk to. How are you? I'm alone right now. Got a minute to chat. Nope, sounds very sus. One moment, please. Let's block that one. I do love it blocking people, don't you? One minute, where's the block? Conversation, block, there it is, block. Are you sure you want to block? Yes, please, and remove from contact list. Thank you very much. Don't be sending me spam, ladies. Most, you know, it's one of those ones where the ladies write to you. And they say, you know, oh, hello, I'm Dina. Oh, I can't talk to you on Skype. Can I have your private email? Oh, would you like to send your bank details as well? I don't think so. Most of them aren't women. They're not women. No, they're dodgy, dodgy people, you know, who are probably a few of them in offices trying to extract money from you, dear listener and viewer. Terrible, terrible. Uh, Wendy says, well done on the weight loss. Yes. It's not a quick thing, though, Wendy. You know what I mean? takes a while to do these things weightless you can't lose it overnight i do love these people you know for one day they starve themselves then they weigh themselves the next morning and think they're going to lose a stone it doesn't work like that a very very bad way to do it but thank you wendy and it continues we're almost at 12 stone and i shall continue to down to that hopefully uh maybe even maybe by my birthday i'll be 12 stone i don't know i don't know we have to see uh, thank you very much. Oh, Daniel now. Oh, they're all starting to send pictures of their blooming pets now. One minute. Right, save as... Uh, why doesn't it always save? Why can't it just save in the same place all the time without having to ask me all the time? Do you want to see a picture of um, Wayne's dog, do you, boys and girls? One minute. It's coming up now. Please stand by. Pictures of Wayne's dog. Images. Open files. No. Two... And Wayne's dog. Now, there's Wayne's dog. Oh, look. Oh. Not Wayne's dog. Daniel's dog. Daniel's dog. Isn't it lovely? Oh, that is a nice dog. What's its name? Let me see. You've probably told me. Henry the dog. Woof, woof. But I'm sorry, Daniel. As with all dogs, he does look a bit stupid. You know, they really are. They're not like cats. Cats are very, very intelligent, dear. Very, very intelligent creatures, cats. They won't even let dogs go past when they're trying to walk from A to B. So thank you for the picture of your dog, Daniel. Very, very good indeed. Um... <laughs> Oh, by the way, you can join in if you want to today. Uh, if you've got Skype, if you're with us live and it's coming up to... to oh. 30 seconds before, hopefully, the clock's chiming. I hope it hasn't broken. Let's get, it should chime any second now. One minute. Please work. <sighs> nope, nothing. Oh, no. Well, that's gone wrong, isn't it? How disappointing. My clock's not working anymore. Oh, I'm quite upset by that. Yet it worked when I flicked the switch from side to side, didn't it? Oh. Don't seem right without that clock chiming, does it? Do you know, I think, actually, I noticed that in bed this morning. I was waiting for it to chime 10 o'clock and um, nothing happened. Oh. Shall I have it fixed or shall I buy another one? Or should I just leave it? I'll tell you what I have got. I've got a cuckoo clock. Shall I put a cuckoo clock up, clock, clock, clock up there? Would you like me to put a cuckoo clock up there? I've got one of those. Tell me what you think. I could put a cuckoo clock up there instead and put that in another room or get it fixed. Or should I get it fixed or buy a new one? I need to know these things. Anyway, uh, Chris at United Kingdom Talk. 
www.dotco.uk <coughs> is the email address. Also, if you're with us live and it's just gone 12.30 on Saturday the 31st of January 2015, if that's the time where you are now and I'm on GMT, okay, whatever it is in your country, then you can call in either by Skype. My Skype username is all one word, United Kingdom Talk. United Kingdom Talk. Or you can phone in. We have a phone-in number, local London number, 020-8144-3477. Please don't be boring when you call in, you know. I would include my best mate on that. Very dangerous when he calls in because you do start sort of dropping off, don't you? 20 Last week, it was very, very exciting last week because... Um, uh, what was his name? Terry H called in last week. Very exciting. A first time ever. He was a first time caller. Terry H, first time caller. If you're wondering what I'm doing, uh, Daniel sent in yet another photo. Oh, you're not, you're not going to start sending in endless photos now, are you, Daniel? Christ, one, one was enough. Uh, it's a picture of his wife, Sarah. So I see if I can... Oh, that's a funny format. What have you sent me there? Let's see if it works. Yes, it does. Uh, Daniel now sends in a picture of his wife, Sarah. <laughs> which actually looks more like uh, some sort of yeti is it a yeti or it looks like someone from planet from the apes does she know you're sending these pictures <laughs> thank you very much <laughs> thank you daniel for that picture there um <coughs> Oh, Wendy says you're you're sounding a bit wheezy. Uh, how is your asthma? Actually, it's really good at the moment. Since I started leaving the heating on all the time, um, uh, Wendy, it's much better now. It's much, much better now. Um, Terry H says, did you watch Cucumber? No, I didn't, I'm afraid. Didn't watch Cucumber. No. No cucumbers for me, I'm afraid, Terry. But I, I do know of it because you told me about it last week. It's very difficult trying to fit everything into my very, very busy life. It really is. And another picture of an old dog. No, it's not one of my exes. Hang on a minute. It's Marge's dog. Marge sends in a picture of her dog here. And she says, hey, my dogs are very smart. They are my children. Had a Doberman once who would find my remote control if I lost it for me. I say, seek remote, and she would. <laughs> this is Marge's baby, Dharma. And a cuckoo clock would be great, being you and your viewers are so cuckoo. Do you think so, Marge? Do you think so? <laughs> Marge says, I woke up earlier, but fell back to sleep, but I'm here now. You're doing handyman time now. Yeah, well, I was trying to fix that clock. Most annoying. You should have a clock set to set to central time in Oklahoma. I have one for the UK. Oh, do you think I... What, should we have a... Because I've got a wall of clocks downstairs, you know. Should we have, like, a wall of clocks with different times? Do you know, I'm just... I think that cuckoo clock's in the other room. Do you want me to get it out? Shall I get the cuckoo clock out? One minute. Shall I? Oh, I'm so disappointed this has gone wrong. I really am. I just wish I get a new one or get that fixed. All oh, voiceover artist is calling. Good morning to Wayne. How are you, Wayne? From high atop the Appalachian Mountains, along the New York Pennsylvania border, where it's colder than a witch's left testicle. Hello, Chris. <laughs> Minus twenty-three centigrade. I bet you're not going out today, are you? Oh, I've already been out. I, I have a, a bunch of retirees who depend upon me to keep their sidewalks swept off and their driveways clear. And that's how I made money to finally get myself an actual honest-to-goodness, you know, real TV set as opposed to the old cathode ray tube thing. I, I think that thing's like 30 years old. I, I, it was left to me by my parents. It's an heirloom, you know. Well, yeah, but I bet the new ones don't last as long as those. Uh, I can guarantee you they don't. Uh. <laughs> I had one. We have a, a supermarket chain here called Tesco's. And um, I bought an unbranded one. You know what I mean? This, like, this, like it would be, in your case, the Walmart own brand television instead of the Sony or the Panasonic, yeah? And All these years and you haven't learned any of the proper electronic shopping tips I have tried to... Rel I, I don't know about you, Chris. I mean... Hey, yes, I, I bought a 
the unbranded, they're, they're kind of like um, children whose fathers are yet to be identified. Notice how I carefully avoided using the B word. Yes. Uh, <laughs> and I'm a fan of the LG products since I have had a lot of close relationships working with and around those people through the years. Because when they first started out, it was simply Gold Star or Lucky Gold Star, yeah. and then they changed it to LG and you know, whatever. Uh, all, all my... Generally, all the televisions in my house now are LG. They're fantastic. But um, I bought a Tesco's own brand once, and it, it lasted 13 months, just over the guarantee period. Uh, fair enough, I wrote to Tesco's and said, this is out of guarantee. You know, I know you might not be able to do anything about this, but I want you to know this. And they sent me a cheque for £250. So can't complain at that, but I won't buy an unbranded... I, with electronics, I don't buy unbranded anymore, ever. No. Ah, but even if you buy branded, you can still save money. Go on. I discovered that people sometimes buy TV sets and they take them home and after they get them there, uh, oh, the screen's too big or the screen's too small or, oh, look, when it was in the box and when it was shipped, uh, this corner of the case, the plastic's got a little dent in it. Or Tiniest little scratch you ever see, right? They, they take them back to the store. I just bought a $900 LG TV set. Yes. And I paid $320 for oh, fantastic. it. Oh, fantastic. Yes, there's a tiny scratch yep. in the bottom right-hand corner in the yes. screen. When the picture's dark, the scratch shows up as a white line. But when you're watching the TV set, your vision is you focused mainly it. in the center of the mm. picture. I hardly mm. ever notice that thing unless I'm looking for it. Yep. I was and that kind of a discount, I can live with it. I mean, yep. really. I recently bought a new powered speaker, um, a Mackie Thump. I don't know if you're aware of those ones, Mackie Thump. Uh, those are the people that teach the uh, <clears throat> policemen uh, how to subdue criminals. Aren't they? <laughs> no, not those. No, there is loudspeakers, loudspeakers. 15-inch, uh, normal price, £270, I think it was. Um, but this one had been sent back uh, because they didn't want it. And it had. It said it had slight scratch on it. Well, I got it, um, £190, so it's a big, big saving on that. Took it out. Of, well, I can't find the scratch anywhere. Can't find a scratch anywhere. Mm. You know, the box was a little bit damaged. It came in, but that was about all. Oh, well. I finally found a way of, of making more money than I usually do in my nightclub appearances. I live <laughs> on the New York side of the New York-Pennsylvania border, and here in New York State, it is considered politically incorrect to drill those fracking wells in the shale to extract the gas. Oh, yeah. But seven miles south of me and crossing over into Pennsylvania, they do drill those wells and they do extract the gas. And their economy is absolutely booming. And I found this uh, barn, and that's exactly what it is. It's a big, huge, long barn. Yes. That they, the people that own it turned it into a nightclub so that these oil drilling workers and gas workers and pipeline layers and all this stuff have some place where they can come in from the hills and show up and have some fun. Whew. You climb on stage when there's 600 half-drunk, rough and tumble people in the audience, Ooh. you darn well better know what you're doing because was... if things go south, you're <laughs> yeah. did, did you remember say... the Blues Brothers movie where the guys were standing behind the fence? While did the you, patrons were throwing the beer bottles at them. Did you just say 600 rough men on the stage at the same time? No, no, no. Out in the oh, audience. Roughnecks. Rough workers. You know. Oh, oh, I say. I might have to come along to that one. Uh, is it? <laughs> you're, you're welcome. And the thing I love most is I, I don't have to worry. My, the amount of money I get paid depends on the size of the audience. Yes. Because everybody that comes through the door has to pay an admittance fee. Right, and yes. the admittance fee goes directly into my pocket. Is it? <laughs> is it like the oil baron's ball on Dallas? Uh, I don't. I, I I I have to admit that because of my work schedule at the time, those programs were being aired on network television. There was no way I was going to be able to see them because I was going to bed at seven o'clock at night and getting up at three in the morning. So I, I never got to see very many of the Dallas programs. I know you can buy the DVDs and you can do this and you can do that, but 
uh, until they show up on Amazon Prime where I don't have to pay anything because I'm a frugal, cheap SOB. Um, I, I'm just not going to watch them. I mean, I've, I've seen, you know, like, and who the hell was it? To find, oops. Oh, sorry. Uh, who was the, the villain that ended up shooting RJ or Bobby Joe or Sammy oh, Lee, no, it was, whatever his um, name was? It was one was of the it, yep. one of the ladies, I think. I can't remember. Oh, are you talking the new series or the old series? The original one. <laughs> was one was one of the ladies. Probably the upstairs maid, right? It was one of the ladies. I can't remember who now. Hmm. Yeah, I can't remember who it was now. Um Oh I possibly, before I forget. Possibly about- Afton, I don't know. Possibly Afton, I can't remember now. Anyone remember that? Who was it who shot JR all those years ago? And about the dogs versus cat thing? Yeah. Um, the cat that I have as a pet now, in true family tradition, showed up as a stray. I, we've never actually adopted a cat. They, they yes. just kind of like show up on the property and, Hello, I'm here, I'm hungry, I need some place to live. <laughs> I, I think there's invisible signs because there's a big field out behind us that leads over towards a... a hillside that drops down where there's a creek that runs through the valley and there's all sorts of wild animals down there we've got coyotes we've got mountain wild cats we got deer um there's (laughs) the funniest one we've had in the last few months a bear came wandering up out of the big river that runs down the valley what do you do when a bear comes to your house uh you keep a low profile and don't don't do anything to make it angry but, so here's, guess where this bear decided to show up? Go on. It was on the other side of the river from me in the town where International Business Machines, IBM, got their original start, but it's now like a ghost town. <laughs> it showed up in front of their village police department, <laughs> sitting on one of the police cars. <laughs> Not the best place for a bear to show up, really, is it? <laughs> So they, they they gently, gingerly encouraged it to move along and finally managed to get it back down on the river bank and it, it wandered off someplace. Yeah. Oh, that would frighten the life out of me, a bear uh, knocking at your door for something to eat. Yeah, well, anyhow, back to about the subject of my cat. So this stray cat, I discovered, I, I just saw this gray streak flying through the tall grass along the fences that border my property and lead out into the field behind me. And I saw it a few times, and I was like, it, it always comes down from the east side of my house, and the way the fence is over there, there's no way it can be getting in and out other than through this backyard. So it's, it's you know, it must be living over there someplace. So I went and looked, and my house is shaped like an L in the front part. Yes. The L part that sticks out is where the front porch is. And there was a small opening between the ground level and the lower edge of the porch, and that's where this cat was going under because it was living under my porch. So I I took a a paper plate and put some food on it and carefully slid it underneath (laughs) the porch. And about the time I got the paper plate most of the way under the porch, from under there comes this hiss. Aha, I have a cat. (laughs) It turned out when I finally got him calmed down to the point where he would actually come out and I could see him and interact with him, he had a notch cut out of his ear, and what that means is this cat was trapped when he was young, neutered, and then taken back to the same area he was trapped in so he could keep other cats away from the females when they're in heat so it would limit the number of kittens in the springtime. Oh, right, yeah. And his job was just to, to play the bouncer to keep the other guys away. Okay. It took me two years to get him calm. <laughs> <laughs> I never bought any of my cats. They were all, um, one was bought for me, um, one was adopted from, I think, my sister. I can't remember now, from a sister. And the one I've got now used to belong to my mum. I've I've never bought a cat. Yeah. Well, anyhow, I I ended up, when I first saw him, I called him the Grey Ghost Mm. because it was just a streak of grey going through my yard. Right. And I've since shortened it to the ghosty. I think he's somewhat hearing impaired. He he no, he can definitely hear things like rumbles from car engines and stuff like yes. that. But when it comes to interacting with voices, he doesn't really seem to very much. But anyhow, long story short, he's turned out to be a, a fairly decent cat. And well behaved. When he, when he feels like it, and he's in the house, and believe me, he's he only associates with us humans 
when it's something that he wants to he do. He wants, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, he'll, he'll come wandering along and he'll take a couple of quick steps and then just jump up and land on my lap and That'd curl be right. up. And That'd the funny right. thing is, when you start petting him, when he starts purring, he also starts making this singing noise. And he is so loud. If it's during the summertime when the windows are open, you can hear him purring and singing outside the house. <laughs> <laughs> but he is one tough cat. He's Top solid, da, 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 very, very muscular, very solid. I, I just weighed him the other day. He's like 14 pounds. And uh, one of my neighbors uh, has a dog that's a chocolate lab, very intelligent, uh, full of vim, vigor. And, and if there's any mischief to get into, this dog's going to find it, including learning how to climb over a chain link fence. Oh, yeah. It sticks its paws in and just climbs up it like it's a ladder. Yep. My and mates, it jumps um, over, bounds down into my yard, and goes, oh, I'm here. My best one day, mates, my, one, my, best one day my cat was out back laying on his uh, sun porch on the back side of the house. The dog spotted the cat and decided it was going to run after the cat. <laughs> so here comes the dog, bark, 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 running across the yard. The cat doesn't move. Just sits right there on its little sun yeah, porch. Yeah, that's right. That's right. They just As soon there. as the dog got within striking range, the dog got its nose stapled. <laughs> Next thing I heard was this big, and this is a big dog. Yeah. Next thing I heard oh, was yeah, this dog yeah. going, yup, 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 yup. Yeah. Yep. He jumped right over the fence and went back into his own yard. And the, the funny thing is, once the cat has attacked and won, you know, it doesn't matter how big the dog is, it then walks off slowly with its tail in the air, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, they, it doesn't they, run. They, my cat has this very muscular strut thing that he does. You know, yeah. Kind of yeah. like John Travolta when he walks into the clubs. You know, That's you know, right. I'm here, man. That's right. Know. My mate's got a cat like that. And it's exactly the same as that, the way it walks around with a strut. And um, when he was a kitten, he learned to climb up the Venetian blinds using <laughs> the slats as a ladder. Yeah, I've uh, I've got one set of Venetian blinds in the living room that somewhere through the years, one of my parents must have had a cat that did that too because that one edge of that Venetian blind is never going to be the same again. No, certainly isn't. Thanks for calling in, Wayne. Great to talk to you after such a long time. Okay, well, I apologize for taking up all of your valuable airtime. but uh, It's like only once see. a year now. You call in once a year now. Can you make it twice? Um, it, it depends. Um Let's see, I'm just checking your viewer count. My goodness, we've uh, we've actually managed to maintain the viewer count. I know, it's know, very unusual. Time. Still at six million. Wow. That's <laughs> normally when I call in within about ten minutes, the, you know, the listener count has dropped down to like 227. <laughs> All right, well, it's been fun. Enjoy the rest of your show. Yep, keep warm, Wayne. Thanks for calling in. Good evening. Bye-bye, sir. Minus 23 degrees where he is. Oh, that's too cold for me. Thank you. Thank you very much to Daniel, who said, um, Wayne is someone who'd like to sit next to him on a long-haul flight and enjoy a good old conversation with him. I'm sure you would. Um, uh, Wendy says, I agree with Marge. I have two dogs. My dogs are very intelligent, too. One of them has been quite seriously ill in the past 48 hours. Had to have an emergency vet yesterday. Oh, I bet that cost you an arm and a leg, didn't it? Eh? emergency vet he's doing a bit better today thank goodness still dehydrated and what was wrong with him wendy we want to know what was wrong with him now i think someone was trying to call in then so if you want to call in now there is a line free you'll have to be very quick call in now 020 8144 right now let me just uh, get a little bit sorted here and what am i doing here some very strange... Who's this wants to become my friend? Wazza Jude. Very strange-looking person. Anyway, <laughs> that's a very strange... Not, not a strange-looking person, a strange-looking photo. There you are. You are now my friend. Um, Marge says, that photo is Chewbacca, the Star Wars characters. Oh, yeah, that was the um, that was the one that Daniel said was his wife, is it? It's wrong. It's, it's all so wrong. A couple of emails have come in. Um, let me see. Ah, oh, yes. Anne wants to know, for your Saturday show, Chris, when I was about 11 years of age, I became a member of the Dennis the Menace fan club, uh, as I loved reading the Beano comic. 
I got two amazing badges and my membership card and had a lot of fun with it all. It was my first membership of anything. What was your first membership of anything and what comics did you read? Oh my word, first membership of anything. I don't know. I would say the Cub Scouts. But there must have been something before that. I, d I don't know, Anne. I don't know what my first membership was. Uh, comics? Well, I kind of watched a little, read a little bit of the Beano and a little bit of Dandy. And there was just, I, th I, I, I remember a comic called Esmeralda. I want, I, let me have a look at this. Esmeralda. Let me just type that into my Google thing. Esmeralda comic. See if anything comes up. I'm going back here a long, long time. Marvel Comics? Comic book. Let's have a look. Esmeralda Lobo. Is that it? Just a second. No, I don't think that's it. And it was, it was, it was coloured. That's, no, that's not it. Esmeralda Comic 19... 1970. Try that. Comics UK. <gasps> yeah, look, look at this. One minute. Esmeralda, no, TV series. Um, images for Esmeralda comic, maybe? Let's have a look there. No, can't find anything about that. I saw something on Wikipedia then. Let's let's see if we can. No, Comics UK Gallery. Es oh, click on E for Esmeralda. Right, one minute, are we going to find this here? Esmeralda, issue one, 1971. That's it. That's it. Yeah, there was a comic called Esmeralda, and I think it was something to do with witches. And it was a free gift inside. I've got a picture here. Wow. That is old. Hang on a minute. Save image. I'm getting very technical today, aren't I? Let's show you this. Hang on. So this was the picture. And, and it was all about witches. Here we are. One minute. Oh, that, that hasn't worked. Always a call coming in. Good morning. Is that Weight Watchers? Oh, it's you. Good morning. Oh, hello, dear. Hello. How How's are you my today? my favourite best friend? Hey. Eh? How's my favourite best friend? I'm very well indeed, thank you very much. We've had a very, very nice show today. Oh, that's good. Yes. I'm finishing off with me. Gallery ID. Just a minute, I'm trying to bring up the picture of the, um, of the, the very first comic that I had, date modified. I can't get well, it. I must tell you. Yes. The tickets are booked. And I oh. sent you the confirmation email. Yes. We are going to a six-hour classical concert. Tell them what it is. It is at the... Um, um, hang on, okay. It's is the it Nuremberg... The is it at the KWT Television Theatre? There's, you don't have one of those, lovely. Oh. Okay. It is... Um, one moment, please. I can't save that picture. I don't know why. What a shame. OK, it's the Master Singers of Nuremberg at the London Coliseum. Uh, we are in, in, uh, in very, very good seats. Uh, we are row D, seats four and five. Uh, very good seats because he said if you're too close, he said you, you don't get to see it. You see the actual uh, singers because obviously there's people in front of you. He said he promised me that they are much better than than the seats where you sit at the very, very front. So I'm very, very pleased about that. Good. So that's all done. Very pleased, dear. Very pleased indeed. And what a very nice man I spoke to as well, dear. Was he helpful? He was helpful uh, and polite. Um, I, think he was a, I think he was a little bit gay, as in joyous and happy. Joyous and happy. Not like you. Miserable oh, and, I am and, very, and deceitful. Very joyous and happy, dear. Very joyous and happy. Very joyous and happy indeed. I'm surprised. And how are you anyway, my best friend? Lots of people were asking after you last night, dear. What people? Oh, well, I went out last night, didn't I? I went out to a nightclub where you used to work. Yes. And people, a couple of people come and said, Oh, how's your friend Chris Reardon? We've no. not seen him. 
I said, what, team favourite? I said, oh, he does charity gigs and everything now. Yes, yes. Very impressive. I bet, you, I bet, I bet the uh, manager of the said venue is it literally is pricked up when he heard the word he does charity events. No, no. Unfortunately, <laughs> unfor unfor unfortunately, he was uh, he was off elsewhere doing stuff. He was All very right. busy and very important last night. Very, very important person. Very, yeah. very. The important. lovely Keith George was there last night. Most pleased to see him. Out of everybody in the venue, most pleased to see him. And what a brilliant, brilliant act he put on last night. Really? Really good. Yeah, I thoroughly enjoyed it. And you know me, dear, I'm very, very critical of people that do things wrong when they should be doing things correctly. Well, I think uh, we all know a few people well like too. that. He's done it very, very well. So, but um, I must tell you, dear, I didn't come home until gone four o'clock this morning. And the, it was like a blizzard coming down on the M4. It was like a blizzard. When I got home, yes. everything was white. Where there was no cars on the road or everything, everything was white. It was absolutely beautiful. Oh. Absolutely beautiful. Um, I was really, it was really lovely. Really, really lovely. So the snow did come, dear. So I think you owe me an apology. No, I will never apologise to you for anything, dear. Never. Oh. Never in a thousand years, dear. Never, Why? ever have an apology of me. Why? Why are you not going to apologise? You was wrong no, again. I'm not going to. Not going to apologise. Well, maybe you should say, well, maybe I, I got it. I was incorrect <laughs> in what I said. <laughs> you think so? Anyway, you? what are you up to this afternoon, dear? Well, I don't know yet, dear. I'm going to be finishing my show in a moment. Yes. Um, but rather disappointingly, I've been able to get out this picture that I wanted to show people of Esmeralda, which was the e ESM, is it maybe? ESM? No, I can't get it up. I don't know why that is. No. Oh. That's very strange. I've copied the... Can't you get tablets for that? Sorry? Oh, shut up, you fool. <laughs> oh, Daniel's here. He says, can I ask, is Ronnie gay? Oh! <gasps> Well, I think that's... How, why Why do you think he's gay? Just because he talks with a camp voice, spends all his money on fashion items and has got a boyfriend, you assume he's gay? What a liberty, dear. That, that is a liberty, Thank my pardon. darling. How very I must dare take a you. Oh, actually, I must take a picture of my wardrobe for the viewers to see. I do have a huge, a huge wardrobe full of clothes, don't I? You do, actually, I have yes. Yes, you do. Mm Many, many clothes, dear. Many clothes. I, I, I must, I must, I must give some to charity. The only thing with that is, it's bad enough being poor and homeless, but wearing last season's fashion must w would really just put the last nail in the coffin, wouldn't it? Well, I'm glad it. I don't do that. Oh, I've got a bit of bad news. How far in did you join the show today? Oh no, I, I just, I've, I've, I've been very busy, dear. I've not listened to any of the show. I'm afraid. Right. Oh well, I have some bad news, dear. Go ahead. My clock has stopped chiming. Oh, no. That, uh, but that, that's not the old one from QVC that's about 30 years old. No, 20 years old. Not the one in right. the living room, the one hanging behind me. Now, I took it off the wall earlier, and mm. I flicked the switches from side to side, and it chimes. Okay, you know, because right. you, you flick it to a different chime, and it'll chime it once so you know what it sounds like, yeah? So mm -hmm, I flicked mm -hmm, it back, mm -hmm, and it did mm -hmm. the normal chime, so I thought, okay, I took the battery out, checked that, that's still very powerful, put it back mm -hmm, in, mm -hmm. started it off, put it on the wall, got to half twelve, nothing. Nothing. Oh, listen! Oh, it's working now. That's because you have the magical me on the phone. It started again. That's because you have the magical me on the phone, dear. Well, I don't know now. <laughs> well, I don't know either, dear. But it's one o'clock, so I've got to go, Ron. OK, my darling. Well, give me a call after you've had dinner. Righty-ho. Cheerio. Thank you. Bye-bye, everybody. <coughs> Bye, Ron. There we Bye. are. Best mate, Ron, on the phone. How lovely to hear his vile little voice. Um, <laughs> now, don't want to miss any messages out. Yes. Um, Wendy says, on the subject of her lovely dog, um, he was being sick every time he ate and drank. Ooh. I hate it when animals are ill, don't you? Because you just feel so completely helpless, don't you? Anyway, she says, even struggled to keep water down. Vet was only £37. 
including meds, as we took him to a college vet. Would have cost at least £150 for my normal vet, and the treatment he got was very good. Uh, that was thanks to my friend Ellie, who suggested I took him to the college vet instead. I've never heard of such a thing, college vet. Is it kind of like, um... Uh... Like... You know when you go to a hairdresser's and you go to the trainee, is it a bit like that? I assume it's a bit like that, is it? So very good. Uh, well, wonderful to save the money, but even more important to get your little baby well. And you, Wendy, because you've had a hard week, haven't you, darling? So I'm glad your dog's a little bit better. Um, Marge says, I read online comics, and this is similar to Esmeralda. It's called Broom Hilda, and she sends a message there. Have a nice week. Thank you very much, Marge. Finally today, um, Joyce send us a Facebook message. Uh, last night it was, actually. And I was talking about skiing on one of the short shows this week. And the fact that I'd done it before, not really for me skiing. Anyway, Joyce writes, My family loves to ski, but I hate it. I have the whole thing figured out, though. If you wear a nice ski outfit with goggles on your head, people actually think you're an expert skier. I love to sit in the lodge, drinking a hot toddy. I've never broken any body parts sitting there. <laughs> so I asked her, do you sit in the whole outfit? She says, I take off my jacket so I don't roast to death, but leave the ski pants on so it looks like I'm going to go back out there and risk my life with the rest of the crazy people. She doesn't actually go skiing. So she's got the whole kit. <laughs> <coughs> She's got the whole kit um, for skiing, right? But she doesn't actually go skiing. She just puts it all on and goes outside and sits outside the lodge or the hotel. And people walking past, they think you're a skier. <laughs> that's how to do it. That is absolutely how to do it. Anyway, that's it for the show today. Thank you very much, boys and girls. It's been an absolute pleasure. I think we've had a nice little show today, nice little chat with a couple of people, and uh, lovely to speak to Wayne again after all that time. You have a lovely weekend, OK? And I'll see you for another short video on Monday. Uh, sorry, on Tuesday, you can find those at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk, unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Uh, click the large union flag there. And that will take you to all the videos and bits and pieces like that. Also on that page, you'll find out uh, the live gigs that I do in various uh, pubs and things like that. And then the audio only show, which is exactly the same as this, but without pictures. You can download that completely free if you want to subscribe to iTunes or download it manually as well. All right. Have a nice day. Thanks for watching and listening. Ciao now.